लॉसलेस कंप्रेशन इन जेपेग कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू पार्ट प्रिपेरेशन एंड एक्सप्लाइटेशन आर एम इन दिस होल वीडियो इज टू यूज द लीस्ट नंबर ऑफ बिट्स टू रिप्रेजेंट द होल इमेज रिमेंबर दिस इज लॉसलेस कंप्रेशन सो नो इन्फॉर्मेशन कैन बी लॉस्ट Let's start where we last left off. We currently have a quantized DCT matrix. This has resulted in a lot of zeros, particularly in the bottom right region. Now, the first step of lossless compression is splitting the whole matrix into DC and AC coefficients. This is just a fancy way of saying that we separate the top left element in the matrix from the other elements. Why? Let's see it in action. If we change the value of this specific coefficient we see that the brightness of the whole image changes so this 0x 0y coefficient can be considered as the brightness or average value for the whole 8 by 8 block now usually the average brightness in any region of an image does not have any drastic changes it's gradual so a better idea would be to store the difference between the top left coefficient of one block and that of an adjacent one as the difference is extremely minute this is exactly what jpeg does with a minor modification let's see an example if our dc coefficient is 43 the previous one is 38 this 43 will be stored as the huffman representation of the number of bits needed to store the difference and the difference itself you will learn more about huffman representation in just a few minutes for now the binary string becomes 100 that is the huffman representation of 3 the bit length followed by 101 the binary representation of the difference itself 5 when we are calculating the top left coefficient for the very first block in the whole image the previous value is considered 0 This separation of the DC coefficient is done to allow us to change the brightness for the whole image by simply tweaking one value that is the first DC coefficient. With that out of the way, let us move on to the encoding of the remaining 63 coefficients. For any encoding to happen, we need a sequence or an array of numbers. Currently, we have a matrix. How can we convert it into an array? well we can go sequentially but this method has one big flaw the zeros that were nicely clumped in the bottom right region get scattered throughout the array we need them grouped together for the next step how can we overcome this the answer is simple we traverse the matrix in a zigzag pattern here i have written a program to do just that Once we feed in our quantized matrix the program gives an output of an array where the top left elements are in continuation followed by the bottom right elements now get ready because we are about to witness something truly spectacular rewind till this time stamp if you need to rewatch this section again take a look at these numbers they aren't random i can assure you this is our encoded string of coefficients but what do they represent and most importantly how let's break it down this first number represents the number of zeros that precede the number we are encoding so if there were five zeros before this number in the zigzag pattern we would have written a 5 over here the second number tells us the bit length or the number of bits needed to represent this number we are encoding any number can be represented in binary with the help of ones and zeros we simply break it down into the addition of the different powers of 2 to encode 3 in base 2 or binary we see that 3 is just 2 plus 1 so 3 is represented as 11 1 in binary or base 2 that is we need two bits to represent 3 hence the second entry in the pairing is 2 and finally the third entry outside the inner bracket is the actual number itself in this case 3 but why do we need to use such a convoluted and complex method of storing these simple numbers well 
if we generalize this for all blocks a very special pattern arises if a coefficient occurs after a long number of zeros there is a very high probability that the coefficient 2 is of a small value this is true because as we progress in the zigzag pattern we are analyzing higher and higher frequency coefficients and these coefficients are always smaller due to the way we did quantization coming back to our discussion this gives us a very important hint that the frequency of the distribution of these pairings is not uniform and this finally helps us in achieving what i consider the most beautiful part of jpeg compression huffman coding huffman coding sorts all the pairings by the frequency of occurrence and builds a hierarchical structure called a tree this tree is provided by the jpeg group and it is same for all images let's take a look at this provided tree to better understand it we see that the more frequent pairings like 01 and 02 are placed at the higher branches of this tree the lower we go the lesser the frequency and higher the number of bits needed to store this pairing this tree is precisely calculated by the jpeg group it helps us in the final conversion the provided tree helps us in converting any run length size pairing into a binary representation any data to be stored on a computer first needs to be converted to ones and zeros to calculate the bit representation of a pairing we simply travel from the root of the tree to the specific pairing every time we use a left branch we append zero to our binary representation and one when we use a right branch due to this the most frequent pairings have a shorter binary representation and less frequent and rare pairings have a bigger representation also this branch calculation ensures that no values start or overlap with the bit representation of another value so you won't find a 010 and a 0101 in the same huffman tree ever and finally the third value the number itself is converted to binary in a special manner to accommodate negative numbers you may notice that from the beginning to adopt for dct we remapped all the values from 0 to 255 to minus 128 to 127 currently we have no method to store these negative values how can we store them let's look at this example let's say we want to encode the coefficients 5 and minus 5 let's encode them simultaneously in this example there are no zeros before any of the values so r or the run length is equal to 0 for both next s or number of bits needed to store 5 or minus 5 is 3 you will see how this happens in just a minute and finally the numbers 5 and minus 5 are attached so now we have 035 and 03 minus 5 Now let's convert the first sequence to binary. 03 is represented as 100 in binary according to the Huffman tree. Binary or base 2 for 5 is 101. So the final encoding for 035 is 100101. 6 bits, that's it. Now for 03 minus 5, the pairing has the same value of 100. Let's look at the remaining part minus five. Here I have all the possible representations of three bits. It goes from zero to seven. Now observe the first four values. We see that zero one zero and one zero represent the same number, that is two. That means that the sequence zero one zero is just redundant. Similarly, the sequences zero zero zero, zero zero one, and zero one one. are also redundant as they can be represented by just 0 1 and 1 1 respectively instead of just throwing away these values we can make better use and utilize them to represent the negative values this is the fundamental change between conventional binary conversion and this method of conversion remember that we have the privilege of utilizing these binary representations for negative numbers only because we store the bit length in the encoding 
had we not stored the bit length we would have had no way of differentiating between a 010 and a 10 encoding coming back to our example we can use the values 000 to 011 to represent minus 7 to minus 4 respectively this means that the new 010 represents minus 5 not 2 10 represents 2 Now as you can see there is no representation for the number 0 itself can you think of a reason well zeros are already stored in the run length number so there is no need to have a representation for 0 here the bits are used as a representation rather than a pure mathematical conversion so coming back we can finally encode 03 minus 5 as 100 010 that is it that was the last step in achieving true lossless compression that was quite the dose of information doing the same for all the remaining coefficients gives us this indicate that there are no values after a non zero coefficient we simply insert a zero zero pairing this is also called eob or end of block it has a representation of 1010 in the huffman tree to finish it off we finally attach the dc coefficient which we computed earlier to the very beginning of this string this is it that is all the possible information needed to represent one single block doing this for all the blocks and also for the chrominance channels cb and cr gives us the final and complete image encoding so that's it for this one as usual all helpful links and pdfs will be found in the description that's it for now catch you all in the next one bye